All right, so I basically have three topics I want to cover today. Um, the first is my UFC review. <coughs> and the second is the even weight title picture. And the third is a strike force um, prediction. Um, I normally say video, but I don't think that'll actually be its own video. I'm going to try and get it into one video. Probably will fail, and we'll probably need a second video. All right, here we go. Um, UFC on Fuel TV, Munoz Weidman. Um, the main card was good. The undercard had some moments. It, you know, by the standards of free card, this wasn't bad. We'll put that way. Javier Zancao beat EC Tamora. Nice display of his stand up, um, which didn't display all that often. It looked better than it ever has. So, the Zancao approving. Time for, I think, more of a upper food chain matchup for him at 135. Uh, two guys who fought on this card that came to mind, or, well, one didn't fight on this card, one fought on the UFC 148 card. Ivan Menjavar, as sort of a possible rebound fight for Menjavar, plus a, you know, let's see where Sun Cow is, or a guy who did fight tonight, TJ Dillashaw, who I think um, is a guy who is also kind of looking to really establish himself. Despite the fact that he was on the main card, Sun Cow was on the undercard, we, you know, he was fighting Bond Lee, which we'll get rid of. Um... Dan Stinchin, Marcel Gamaris, terrible fight. Don't watch it. Marcel Gamaris is mentally ill. Stinchin, please cut him. There you go. Andrew Craig, half on Natal. Um, Natal looked good. I still don't like Natal, and I really couldn't tell you why. It's actually been one of those kind of mysteries for me. He talks a lot of smack in the middle of the fight, though, which, you know, is El, you know, Diaz esque, but um, it doesn't seem to work for him. Um, Craig coming up with the big. Come from behind, high kick, TKO victory. The problem with figuring out who, out who Craig should fight next is he is 2-0 in the UFC. But in both of those fights, he was getting an ass kicked. Um, so I don't know. Uh, Chris Kyrgios or Josh Ferguson. Chris Kyrgios just pretty well dominated the fight. Um, not not per se dominating, but uh, you know when he wanted to take down Ferguson, he could. He was outlanding Ferguson. He's just better than Ferguson everywhere. It's hard to say who he'll fight next because flyweight is just so new, and there's so many new fighters coming in or cutting down in weight that it's hard to know who's even in the division at this point. But um, you know, so I don't generally match make for the flyweights. Uh, Bruce Lee Royales, Caceres, Demacio Page, Demacio Page, you're getting cut. This is a fourth consecutive loss in a Zufa brand fight, all of which by choke, all of which by a different choke. Actually, I think the first two are guillotines. But all the UFC fights have been different methods of choke. Um, he, I don't know, I don't know what to tell him. Um, you know, prior to this, he had been at least losing to, like, you know, very solid fighters, Brad Pickett, Brian Bowles, um, I want to say Joe Benavides was in there. Uh, no, no, it was Mighty Mouse, Mighty Mouse. Demetrius Johnson, Brian Bulls, Brad Pickett. Caceres, I don't know, he's, he's shown some skills off his back, but I still wouldn't say he's that good of a fighter. I mean, his UFC record, I think, you know, verifies this. His only win is against a very washed-up-looking Cole Escobedo. Anyways, uh, next for Caceres. I uh, don't really care. Um, I still don't think he'll go tremendously far. He really needs to learn to stop a take down, um, because it seems like people do take him down at absolute will. So, even when he wins. So, yeah. I don't know. On the main card, Rafael Dos Anjos, Anthony Nurjokwani. Both guys actually impressed me by being able to hang in, uh, where the other guy was good. Dos Anjos on the feet. Nojikwani on the ground. Uh, Nojikwani was able to get back up. He was able to avoid getting submitted. Dos Anjos was able to actually really, you know, tag him a couple times. Really, actually, you know, Dos Anjos, he, he goes through phases where he kind of impresses me, kind of doesn't impress me. He impressed me before he made into the OC. Impressed me in Jeremy Stevens. Didn't, you know, then, you know, he loses to guys like Gleason T. Bow in horrible fashion and Clay Guida. Because Guido's doing the exact same. <laughs> Excuse me. That he does to everyone. Um, uh, as long as they're not named uh, Gray Maynard. Um, what is next for Rafael Dos Ninos? The problem is that he's lost to guys that pretty much prevent him from elevating himself in the division. 
but at the same time you just don't want to have him fighting um, not terribly great fighters um, although a fight between him and uh, Khabib and Nurmagomedov kind of came to grounds because you know both fought Lisa Tebow and one won the other one didn't but I mean Nurmagomedov really didn't win that fight so there you go TJ Dillashaw submitted Von Lee. Von Lee looked good on the feet. Not good once he got his back taken. Um, like I said, Dillashaw could do a fight with the Sun Cow. Uh, Francis Carmo, Carlos Mola. Francis Carmo winning by rear naked choke. Did not see the fight. Was told that I didn't really miss anything good. And there, that That's really all it is. Carmo, you know, have him fight upper competition, because Francis Carmo seems to fight up to the level of competition, or down to the level of competition. And if you want to see good fights, you have to win against good fighters. It doesn't particularly matter who. Um, Aaron Simpson beat up, beat down Kenny Robertson in the second and third round, anyways. First round was pretty good, actually. Um, I enjoyed it. But the second and third round were more one-sided and more very wrestler-esque. Still not tremendously boring, but... Not as good. We'll put it that way. Um, Simpson won. Don't really care who he fights next. I think I think that he's just too old to make any kind of real run at 170, um, which I think people forget. But uh, you know, clearly he belongs. Yeah, he's 37. Um, James Tahuna lit up Joey Beltran horrendously. Joey Beltran seems to be able to defend straight punches reasonably well and cannot defend an uppercut to save his life. But hell of a chin. Makes LeVar Johnson look better, which is a bit strange. Anyways, Tahuna won. I want to see Tahuna against actually someone good, because we haven't seen that since I think his Alexander Gustafson fight. I, mean, I suppose it depends on your definition of good, but I mean, Joey Beltran, Aaron Rosa, Ricardo Romero, two of those have been cut. One of those is uh, probably going to get cut. Um, name, name, name. I don't know, name. You know what? Him and Tiago Silva. Let's throw that together. Uh, Chris Weidman beat Mark Munoz. Her, a great performance. Who should Weidman fight next? Anderson Silva. Leads us into a segue. Middleweight title picture, which I will be able to fit in this video. Okay. People are saying Weidman has not done enough to get a title shot. And that it should go to someone else. And that he should fight other people. People are claiming he should fight Vitor Belfort or Chael Sonnen. How does that help him? Yeah, if he wins, he gets notoriety. If he loses, he he's out of the title picture, and we're really running out of contenders. People are saying, well, I'm not interested in seeing Weidman fight Anderson Silva. Who are you interested in seeing him fight? I got news for you. The casual fan does not know who Hector Lombard is. To be fair, if Hector Lombard destroys Tim Boach, and then you want to give him a number one contenders match against Weidman, I don't have a problem with that. That could be good. That could be a fight that springs either one of them to the point where they could fight Anderson Silva. Putting Weidman against Vitor Belfort, who's 2 0 since his loss to, to uh, Anderson Silva. Those wins being Yoshihiro Akayama, who has not won since the Belcher fight, and over a half dead Rumble Johnson. And he's also hurt, like long term hurt. Chael Sonnen just lost to Anderson Silva. You basically are putting him right after losing into a number one contenders match. And I realized that Chael Sonnen only fought twice to get a rematch with Anderson Silva, but that was after he had actually won four rounds off of Anderson Silva. This time he won a round and then got killed in the second round. Yeah, yeah, there was grabbing of the shorts, debatably legal knee, etc., 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 Still got killed. I'm sure Chael Sonnen and Anderson Silva 3 will happen. I don't want it to. I'm sure it will. But this is not the time. People are also underestimating the fact of the undefeated factor. Like it or not, if you look at boxing, for example, people are always excited to see the undefeated fighter. Wyman's undefeated right now. He's not going to stay undefeated. You don't in MMA. It's just too easy to get the knockout, too easy to get the random submission. Shit happens, in a nutshell. He's undefeated right now. You can market him as undefeated. He beat Mark Munoz. This is the weird thing, of course. People who say that 
Chris Weidman's not known enough and that Mark Munoz wasn't a big enough star to send you into a title shot are the same people who were saying Mark Munoz should get a title shot if he beats Chris Weidman and people who say Hector Lombard should get a title shot if he beats Tim Boach despite the fact that Tim Boach has one good win a fight that he was getting his ass kicked in against Yushin Okami and the fact that Mark Munoz is a bigger name than Chris Weidman yet beating Weidman would have been a title shot for Munoz beating Munoz apparently isn't a title shot for Weidman He's also beaten Demi and Maya, who's had a title shot. I don't understand where his resume is lacking. I don't get it. And I still say, more people know him than know Lombard. You go into a bar, and I did this actually, because I was in a bar when shortly after Lombard's signing was you announced and we were watching Fight Card. And I asked around, saying, you know, who's excited for Hector Lombard? And you see, got a lot of blank looks. Got a lot of people who went, yeah, that's that's awesome news, but in a very unconvincing fashion. Like, they didn't really know. Maybe it's different in the States. Maybe it is. Maybe people really do know who Hector Lombard is there. I, however, doubt there's that much of a difference. Hardcore fans want to see Lombard fight him. They don't realize casual fans don't. Somehow the hardcore fans think Chris Weidman isn't known to the casual fans, despite the fact that he's fought in the UFC longer. Got news for you, people. People watch the UFC. People don't necessarily watch Bellator. And certainly don't watch the other promotions that Lombard has fought in. Also, I don't really see how Lombard's resume is all that much better. He has one good win. Shlomenko. That's it. Everyone else he's fought is sub-top 30. And Weidman has basically one definite top 10 win in Munoz. Uh, one probable top 10 win in Maya. I'm sorry, people. This doesn't jet. Weidman should get the title shot, or if Lombard, under basically three cir circumstances, three things have to happen in the Bosch fight for Lombard to really be in this picture. One, he has to win. Two, he has to dominate. Three, the crowd has to react to him before and after the fight. Specifically before the fight, because that will actually prove they know who he is. You know, Krokop got a huge, you know... Ovation, or not ovation, but huge cheer, huge, you know, supporting when he fought Eddie Sanchez, for example. That was the proof that, you know, what Crow Cop is a known commodity to the American fan base. I would argue that he still doesn't get even a number one contenders match, even if that's the case, because I don't like this whole idea of, hey, I get one fight and then I get a title shot or a number one contender fight. I didn't like it when Anderson Silva did it. The only people I did like it for uh, basically was Dan Henderson, because that was the um, uh, merging of the Pride and UFC titles because that had to happen. And I guess Rampage just because there was no one else for Chuck Liddell to fight and Rampage had a win over him. It's not like there's no one for Anderson to fight and Hector Lombard has a win over Anderson Silva. Either. It's not. That's my two cents. You want to argue it and you want to say, fine, this is, you know, I don't think that Lomb I don't think that you should risk a Chael Sonnen fight because Sonnen, well, definitely don't risk a Vitor Belfort fight. Because Belfort Silva won't draw. And I'm sorry, people. People seem to think Belfort's a huge name. That's another one. People don't really know him as well as the hardcore fans think. Because you got to remember his best days and his great moments were before 2004. When people weren't watching. It hadn't become big yet. Tito was your big star. Um, you know, he's got some notoriety because he beat Rich Franklin, but no one cares that he beat Akayama. No one cares that he beat Rumble Johnson. Nobody cares that he beat... Has he even beaten anyone else in the SEO? I'm going to pull up the old Wikipedia page here for... One, Vitor Belfort. And I would like to know why people think he is tremendously known. People didn't honestly care that he pulled out of the fight with Vanderlei. There you go. Um, yeah, Anthony Rumble Johnson, Yoshiro Akayama, Rich Franklin. Yeah, three and one in the UFC. The only one that people really cared about was the fact that he got knocked out by Anderson Silva. So yeah, it's time to stop recycling fighters in the middleweight title picture when you have new blood to put in there. I'll probably have to distract for video 
separately because I'm at about 50 minutes. So anyways, be back in a moment.